For those of you who have been following the channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I've been trying my damnedest to use Xmonad full time for the last couple weeks. And I've had some problems. This is my third video on the window manager that everybody else seems to like. And I've been waiting for the moment where I have that eureka moment. Like, yes, I like this thing because it's good and you know it has really cool features and it's easy to use those moments haven't happened <laughs> just not even close and i'm just done with it so i've been using it off and on for the last two weeks now it's not it has not been full time because there have been moments where i just had to get something done and xmonad was distracting me because i was always attempting to make it better so i was tweaking it stuff so i had to go back to dwm a couple times or usually a couple times a day, to actually get work done. So I I have some thoughts on these two weeks. So I, so I just thought I would lay out my thoughts and explain uh, why I'm giving up. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so this is what my Xmonad looks like right now. So the first thing I had problems with, and this is the... the this was the topic of my first video, was the bar. So I could not, for the life of me, get Xmo bar to work. And I tried other people's configs. I tried doing my own thing. I tried going to, to the documentation and doing exactly what the documentation said to do, and I still couldn't get to work. I did finally get Xmo bar to work using the Arco Linux Xmo bar package in the AUR. By the time I actually did get to work, I come to realize that XMobar is not easy to configure. It's not necessarily the hardest thing I've ever seen to configure, but it's not necessarily something that I even wanted to spend time learning about. So I almost immediately switched back to, to Polybar, despite the fact that I'd spent at that point like almost a week trying to get XMobar to work. So I'm on Polybar, and there's nothing wrong with Polybar at all. It works well in Xmonad for the most part if you have certain packages actually uh, imported into your Xmonad.hs file. It works fine. So the bar thing I've gotten situated to the point where it's completely usable. I know I, I know Polybar very well. I can configure it as much as I want to. So the bar problem has been solved. I don't know what I was doing wrong with the Xmo bar thing. I still have no clue. Uh, until I, I used that Arco Linux package, whatever I was doing wrong was being done wrong across multiple configuration files. Because I used DT's configuration files, I used somebody else's on Reddit's, I used my own. I used the default configuration files, the like the one you download from the Xmonad con you know website. I used that. Uh, <laughs> still, I couldn't get it to work. So I have no clue what I was doing wrong. All I know is the Arco Linux one worked. So I didn't actually learn anything from that experience outside of a little bit of Haskell. And I'm going to be talking about Haskell quite a bit you know, more later. But the bar thing was the biggest turnoff to begin with. And eventually, once I've got onto Polybar, I was able to you know, be okay with it. So moving on from the bar, my next task was to try to get scratch pads working. So... I use the crap out of scratch pads in DWM. I just use them all the time. I have my music player in a scratch pad. I have pulse mixer in a scratch pad. I have ranger in a scratch pad. I have a couple terminal scratch pads. I have like five scratch pads in DWM. I use scratch pads in i3 all the time. Ever since I found about, out about them, scratch pads have been probably the best thing I use in Linux all the time because they're just a complete game changer. So... Xmonad has named scratch pads capabilities. It does. According to the documentation, it's actually fairly easy to implement. You just import one library, put in your name scratch pads and what you want them to be, and then add in your key bindings, and then add something towards the end here in my manage hook or whatever it is. I tried to do it the way the documentation said to do it. That didn't work. I got errors. Uh, so I deleted that, and then I did it the way DT did it in his configuration files. I got errors. I found a couple of the tutorials online, 
and I thought I understood what I was doing. I really did, and I still got errors. So I don't know what I was doing wrong there. So I, I scrapped this configuration file, because this is the Arco Linux configuration file for their Xmonad ISO. So I scrapped this thinking that because they go through and they import a ton of stuff, right? They just import a ton of libraries. So I figured, well, maybe there's some conflicting stuff there because that has something to do with the way Haskell works. And you really can't have conflicting libraries or something. I don't know. I really don't understand it. But I do know that Arco Linux imports a lot of stuff. So I figured I'll just go through and I'll rebuild up the configuration file from scratch using the xmonad tutorial which is on their github page so i did that and then i added the scratch pad stuff directly from the xmonad documentation i did it precisely the way it said still got errors but by this point i've been using it for two weeks and i've been working on on name scratch pads or scratch pads for two or three days at this point i'm just <laughs> i'm done I don't understand Haskell. I think that this this entire fiasco comes down to the point or comes down to the fact that I cannot understand Haskell worth a damn. I can't. Uh, there are certain things that just don't make any sense to me. So I've had some things explained to me. I've read some of the doc Haskell documentation. I'll admit I haven't read all of it. Uh, that's just beyond me. I, I'm not that interested in it, I guess. I, I I've tried to get my head around it. So, like, when I switched to DWM, I didn't know a lick of C. I, I, my only experience with C was a brief time in college when I was a computer science major. And that lasted for, like, a semester. And I realized I wasn't a good coder, so I moved on to history. So, I'm, I'm not a coder. I've never been a coder. But when I switched to DWM, I was able to learn C well enough that I can go through and do anything I want to do in DWM. I can patch things to the high heavens. I can go through and make changes to key bindings and make changes to the patches and all the stuff. I can do it just fine and understand what I'm doing. That's the key thing here is I understand when I make a change in C in DWM's configuration files. I understand why the change needs to be made, what the change is going to do, and all the stuff that goes along with making a change in DWM and everything that it's going to affect, right? That's a big thing when you're learning something new. Actually being able to understand what you're doing, even if you're following a direction, even if you're following directions from a tutorial online, being able to understand is a big hurdle to get past. And I passed that in DWM. With Haskell, even working through this for the last two weeks, I understand very little about Haskell. I understand very little about what Haskell does. So I understand that it imports libraries from other things. So I get that part, but I don't understand the differences between import and import qualified, even though I've looked it up, they've explained it to me. I just don't understand what the difference is. Um, and I don't understand, for example, why you'd use one or the other. I don't know. I just know that this came from the Arco Linux config, and some of them have import, some of them have import qualified. What What's it mean? I don't know. Again, I didn't understand the explanation. Again, this is my small brain, so don't don't in the comments try to explain it to me. I don't. I'm I'm done. Okay, <laughs> I'm not learning anymore. I'm not even going to try to learn anymore. Um, I'm just pointing out that I don't understand. The other thing I don't understand is apparently if you don't import things a certain way or you import things that conflict with each other, you're going to get errors. Or an even better example is if you import something and then you don't use it for something later on in the config, you'll get errors. I don't understand that at all. I mean, that just seems like poor programming design to me. Like, uh, who cares if you import a library and it doesn't get used? It doesn't make any sense to me at all. I mean, it, what does it hurt? It, it doesn't hurt anything if you import... At least it doesn't seem like it would hurt anything if you import something and then just not use it. So, uh, that's another thing about the libraries that I just didn't understand. And they seem to have a lot of libraries that just overlap. So, for example, they have two Scratchpad libraries. One of them is called Scratchpad, which is kind of like a generic thing. It just does a terminal. 
and they have name scratch pad which allows you to go through and actually create a whole bunch of scratch pads that have names i couldn't get either of them to work but the fact that they're both exist and you obviously can't use both of them or it doesn't seem like you can use both of them they just kind of overlap now you can't i can't really complain about that because if you look at dwm's patches they have a ton of patches in dwm that overlap and if you combine them they oftentimes very much conflict so it's kind of the same thing so if you look at importing libraries as kind of being the xmonads versions of patches it makes sense why you can't have overlapping libraries so that's a that's one thing of X, of Haskell that I just had a hard time getting my mind around. So if we go to the bottom here of my config and we look at some of this syntax, this right here confused the hell out of me and I still don't know what it means. And one of the things you have to do, so as far as I can tell, a lot of this stuff is setting variables. So up here you have something where it says my manage hook equals or whatever, you know, all the way up here. And then down here, these are all the things that the Xmonad system starts or uses to run itself. It's very confusing and I don't, <laughs> I just can't really get my head around it. So like mod mask is what the key bindings use, but the it's equating itself to my mod mask, which is set to the super key, which I think I can understand, but it seems redundant to me. Why not just use mod mask? It doesn't, I mean, it's really weird. Uh, the manage, the manage hook stuff is the most confusing part of this whole thing. I don't know what it means. I tried to get my head around it and I watched some videos and I what I read some of the documentation. I just could not get my head around it. Adding to the fact, I don't understand how some of this stuff is combined. So for example, this stuff here is all combined into something in some kind of layout, some kind of form. And in order to get this name scratch pad stuff to work, you have to add something to this. And one of the errors that I kept getting is that it couldn't, for whatever reason, pull. It didn't understand what I was trying to add. And even though I was going through and following the directions and I added it literally copy and paste right to this, the way it said to add it. I was getting errors and I don't understand why I was getting errors. So somehow, some way, whatever way these things are combining themselves, adding anything on top of it didn't work. And I didn't understand why. And finding out why is a mess. So here's my biggest problem is Haskell seems to have several ways of doing any one thing. So I found three or four tutorials on using name scratch pads. Every single one of them was different. Whether any of them work, I don't know. I'm assuming DT's configuration works, right? Because he uses it all the time and he you know, talks about Xmonad and stuff. I'm assuming the person on Reddit who, uh, who posted their rice of Xmonad, I'm assuming their config configuration files work. So obviously the way they did it and the way DT did it and the way other people have done it, all those ways work. But none of them worked for me, <laughs> and I don't understand why. Uh, and again, because there's three different ways of doing uh, this thing, apparently, or even more, or whatever, finding out what you're doing wrong is very hard. It's very difficult because the, you don't know where to look for answers. Like, you would assume you'd go on to the Xmonad documentation, which supposedly is very good. Uh, I don't think it's all that good because it's doesn't seem like it's correct like for like i keep coming back to the name scratch pad things i first when i wanted to add the name scratch pads i went to the documentation i followed the directions specifically and like word for word i followed them i read them and everything which is you know it's unusual for me <laughs> like you reading the documentation first is is very rare for me usually i wing it um and find the errors and try to learn myself before I go hunting for the documentation. But this time I knew I was going to have problems. So I was like, you know, I'll go to the documentation first and I followed the directions and I still got errors. So either the documentation is wrong or because there are multiple ways of doing things, the configuration file that I'm using is set up in such a way that the documentation uh, doesn't apply to me. So 
that's a possibility. Or it's a possibility that because of the way this configuration file is set up, uh, that method just doesn't work and there's another way that I'd have to go through and do it. And again, it comes back to which libraries you have imported and stuff like that. So that's the reason why I scrapped this configuration file and followed the tutorial again and created a configuration file by, by scratch from the tutorial and then tried to add the X, the name scratch pads from the documentation. Still didn't work. It was coming up with errors. It was it, something about parsing and stuff like that. So usually when you get the parse error, it means you have uh, something in the wrong place. So I did eventually get that one figured out, but I got another error dealing with this manage hook thing where it, it didn't like the way I was combining something or the other. And even in the configuration file of the one that I created from scratch, it wasn't the Arco one, even that didn't work. So it's a mess. I, and look, it's been two weeks off and on. Uh, and like I said, I've been waiting for that moment where I, even getting past the fact where I can't get name scratch pads to work, even getting past that fact, just using Xmonad, because the configuration file I'm using is, you know, something that I can use. And I've been using it, and I've been waiting for that moment to, that, to pop into my head to make me understand why this is better, or why Xmonad is good. And I haven't had that moment. And I don't think that Xmonad is bad. I just want to put that out there. I don't think that there's anything wrong with Xmonad. Uh, personally, it's not for me. Uh, I, I can't get my head around Haskell uh, even a little bit. I'm, I mean, I suppose it's not true. I understand a little bit of Haskell. But it's at least more now than I did before. But it's still most of it just leaves me behind. Uh, so Xmonad, for other people, seems to be perfectly fine. For me... When I use a window manager, I need to be able to understand what the configuration file is doing. When I'm using i3, I can understand every single line in that configuration file, and I can tweak it, I can change it, I can move them around, and I can completely understand. I could go through right now and write my own i3 configuration file from scratch without looking at the documentation. I could almost do that for DWM. I would miss a few lines, obviously, but... Uh, there's a lot of the DWM configuration file that I understand. And I could go through and recreate that from scratch almost completely without looking at the documentation. Now, DWM has crap documentation, so uh, that wouldn't be anything I'd have an option to do anyways. But the the point is, is I understand what DWM is doing. There are parts of C or whatever that I still have trouble with, but I'm confident that if I needed to go through and find about what something did, I could go through and find out what it did very easily online somewhere. Uh, whether it's something with C or something with the way DWM works, I could go through and find out. With Haskell, or with Xmonad, I have no confidence in being able to fix any problem. If something goes wrong, I have no clue what I'm doing. And there doesn't seem to be an a one-stop shop out there anywhere where I can figure out what I'm doing wrong. And even, like I said, even the documentation failed me in this part because, like I said, the documentation seems to only apply sometimes. And that's not, that's not a great feeling. I like having the confidence that I know what my window manager is doing in the background, what it's, the configuration is doing, and I don't have that conf confidence with Xmonet. So, I'm done. That, that's the whole point of this video is that I'm done with Xmonad. I've tried it now two or three times. I've gotten farther this time than I have ever before. Usually I got stuck with the bar and then I gave up like after a couple days. This time I still got stuck with the bar, but I managed to get polybar working, so it's not a big deal. Uh, and I definitely learned more about Haskell this time than I did last time because I used it for longer. Could I learn more? Could I put more effort into it? Probably. But I'd, the, the thing is about this, this is supposed to be fun for me. And the first few days were fun. Like, yeah, I was having problems. Yes, I was frustrated. But I was still having fun tweaking and learning and, and discovering new sources of information on the internet. 
that point has passed. It's no longer fun for me. And that's the reason why I'm done. So I'm going to be going back to DWM. I'm going, my next window manager that I'm going to try or switch to is going to be awesome. And now I used awesome in a live stream a few weeks ago and I wasn't impressed with Lua, but I didn't really give it a good, tr you know, a good try. So I'm going to install awesome probably tomorrow and use it for a little while and then I'll create a video about it. But that's the next one I'm going to try because I like trying new things and I like learning new stuff. But for whatever reason, there's a block between my brain and everything that has to do with Haskell. And that means Xmonad is done for me. So uh, thank you for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at the Linuxcast. You can follow me on Facebook at the Linuxcast. And you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuxcast. Uh, tiers 2, 3, 4, and 5 get early access to many of our videos. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you follow us on uh, Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuxcast again. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks everybody for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.